Hello, hello. You're very welcome back to another video. How long does it take for your flight simulator to load? From starting the application, waiting, have a cup of tea, cut the grass, go for a drive, have your dinner, and then it's kind of time to start flying. I ran a poll on YouTube a couple of weeks back, finding out on average what was your waiting time. 30% of you guys are waiting more than five minutes. Today's video, where we're going to look at three ways that's going to help fix that. We're going to try and reduce the loading times in the sim. First up, we're going to be checking out some options inside the simulator itself. Then we're going to move to the freeware add-on called Add-ons Linker. And then finally, we're going to look at a fast launch option. So let's get started. Okay, so to kind of start us off, we're going to go into our options screen here in the main menu. So we'll click options and then general options. There's one thing I need you to check. We're going to click on data and we're going to scroll down and make sure that our bandwidth usage is set to unlimited. Always worth checking with your ISP. Make sure you don't have monthly caps, but ideally you want this set to unlimited. So next up, what about the packages? We'll have a look at this. This is from Zendesk, right? And it's how to improve loading times. The sim scans the official and community folders every time we hit play or launch. The larger the official and community folders are, the longer the loading times are likely to be. They recommend putting the sim on an SSD and deleting the package folders of the mods and official aircraft you're not planning to use regularly. This is important. So okay, what don't we use all the time? To find these files, we're going to click on profile and then it's content manager. On this screen, we can see everything that's installed, not installed, or if there's any updates available. We also have a search bar. We have different view thumbnails, so we can look them as a package or individual files, and we can do a sort. So first up, we're gonna go for the POIs. We've had 16 world updates since the sim has launched. And if you're no longer flying in a region, or if the POIs don't mean a whole lot to you, but I will start there. So what we're going to do, we're going to select on the detailed view. We're going to sort these from high to low. And in the search bar, we're just going to type in POI. Now we can see all the POIs for all the world updates. Some of these files are massive. This one here for Oceana, it's almost 12 gigs. And what's frightening here, right? When you have a number of these selected, this could free up 70 to 80 gigs of data that you don't really need. Just be aware that if you do turn these off, there are some third party sceneries, airports specifically, they require to have some of the POIs on because they're using assets from the POI packs. So moving on, right, there's more. We're going to type in bush trips and this is the same story again. If there's bush trips in regions that you just, you don't fly or maybe you don't use the bush trips, well, lift them out of there. Next up, we're going to check out landing challenges and it's the same story again. If you've no interest in doing any of the landing challenges, just uninstall them. There's quite a bit of space taken up with all this stuff. You can also see there's some lessons or training. So again, we can type in training and that's going to start lifting out all the lessons. And if you're not using this stuff, there's no need to have them in here. Even by selecting, you know, say the first three, four, even five, there's almost two gigs of data just sitting there. Next up, we're going to have a look at the discovery flights. And again, if you're not using these, I'd get them out of there. They're nice to fly maybe once or twice, but that's about it. So what about our aircraft? If we wanted to have a look at any particular aircraft, we can say, right, what aircraft are we using or not using the most? So make sure you have the installed tab clicked, and then we can go in here to say, well, look, what are the biggest files? Don't touch the core content, you need that. But anything else, like for example, if I wasn't using the Raphael that much, well, here's an option to lift it out. Same goes to the Transal or the Stratoliner. You got to select the aircraft that you know you're going to be using on a day to day basis. And sure, if you want to add in the other aircraft after the fact, you can absolutely do that. Uninstalling and installing, it's the same process. The same goes for airports. I mean, there could be some airports you just don't use. You'll never fly into that region. And with all the world updates, there's been a ton of handcrafted airports. But again, if you're not using them, if you're not flying in and out of those regions, some of these airports can be quite beefy. I mean, like there's there's nearly four gigs here with just two airports. So when it comes to your flight simulator, these are the settings inside the sim. These are the ones to target and these will have a dramatic 
effect on your loading times. When I did this, I saved almost 100 gigs of data that the sim no longer has to load. So our second option is using MSFS add-ons linker. This application is excellent and it's very intuitive and we have a whole load of options here. If you ramble on over to flightsim.to, that's where you can get it. And big, massive shout outs to the developer of this, Bad2000. Like, just what an incredible job. It's regularly updated and it's fairly easy to use. I mean, once you kind of set it up, you're good to go. So once you download it, you can go ahead and open the application. So here's my add-ons linker running. And what I've done, if you look, I have all different folders set up. Effectively, I create a structure. So if I go into... Let's see here. I have them buried in here. So the flight sim files, I've just called the folder flight sim files. And in here, I've created individual folders for aircraft, avatars, liveries, whatever you like, or stream only. That's what I'm streaming. Um, or you can create something in new. So for example, we can put in, you know, test folder, right? Test folder. As soon as we do this, I've already linked add-ons linker to my flight sim files. And we can see that test folder has just appeared straight away. It's, it's super, like it just connects. So if we delete that, this is going to detect a change. We're going to refresh it and it's all tidied up again. Now, inside each of these folders, well, I've broken them down even further. I've airlines, business, choppers, GA, you name it. I've broken it down all the way. So once you install your add-ons into these folders, effectively what you're doing, you're no longer using the main community folder to have all of these in. In my community folder, see the way we have all these shortcuts? Well, that's add-ons linker putting the link in there for you. So what we want to do, we want to add some stuff. So we're going to go to options and inside your options, you're going to go to general. You can see your add-ons folders. This is where you're going to tell the add-ons linker. These are the folders and they could be on any drive. They could even be cloud-based. You're just saying this is where my add-ons live. And then you got to just direct it into your main community folder. It's pretty much that simple. I also have a couple of extra options here. You can have this fast start in the sim if you want. You can do all sorts of crazy in here. It's really, really good. You have UI options and so on and so forth. The main thing is you pick your destination folder where you're going to put all your add-ons. And I've used like, it's like a hierarchy. So I've just said flight sim files. So it's going to pick the parent folder. And if I go into my flight sim files, well, it's full of other content in here. So when I want to have a look to see what's happening, for example, if I go to scenery, see that they're broken down by continent. If I go into, let's go to Europe. In Europe, then we scroll down, we go into Ireland, and then these. this is all the Irish scenery. And if I want these things turned on or off, I just click on the little tick beside it. If they're unchecked, it means they're not going to load into the sim. This is a great way of speeding up your loading times. If you're doing a flight that's going to be over in the United States, you're not going to need anything in Europe or Asia. You can turn all that stuff off. Lastly, we have presets. This is really handy. We can create a preset depending on the type of flying or, you know, the location of flying we're going to do. All you need to do to create a preset, you can say, right, create a new preset containing the add-ons currently checked or just do one from scratch. So we're going to say, let's call this one, I don't know, USA. Right, so we're going to say, OK, this is the preset. We're going to call it USA and it's going to say, right, for this, what do you want running? For me, if I want aircraft or whatever way you've broken this down, the main things we're going to look at, we're going to go to our scenery. And we don't need anything in Africa or Asia or Europe in the Middle East. Here's North America. We do want this. So we're going to select USA. So we just tick on the folder and whatever you have installed for the USA, that's what you're going to have. But once you have it done, you just hit OK. If I want to load a preset, I go down to the options on the bottom and I select load in the preset for the USA. That's super, super handy. So the third bit of the puzzle is on the little black screen here. We're going to create a fast launch. Now, there's other ways of doing this. If you have it on Steam, you can do a fast launch through the launch options. But if you want to kind of bypass some of the, you know, the intro movies and all this sort of jazz, well, all you need to do, I'm going to put the code or, you know, the line of code in the description, in the show notes underneath this video. So just do a copy and paste. And it should be usually from the App Store install. So what we're going to do, we're just going to right click and we're going to say new shortcut. And in here, we're going to click shortcut. And it's going to say type the location of the item. 
What we do here, we copy the code that's in the description and we just paste it in. In this case, it's coming up to show it's a start shell for the apps folder, Microsoft Flight Sim, and you see this fast launch. We're going to click next. We're going to give it a name. We'll call it MSFS, you know, whatever you like, fast. And we're going to click finished. Now, once we have on this, we have this new kind of a shortcut. If we double click this, this should fire up the sim and it's going to bypass any of the initial loading screens. It'll probably save you 30 seconds. I haven't really measured it, but if you combine all of these three things together, it's going to lead to a massive decrease in time spent waiting for the sim to load. So there we have it. Three ways to hopefully speed up your loading times when it comes to Microsoft Flight Sim. Let me know in the comment section below, has this helped or maybe there's something else? Have I missed something? I love reading your comments. And if you get the chance, do be sure to hit the like, subscribe and get notified. Let me know you like this sort of content. Right guys, until the next time, you take care.